Hey there, it's Dr. Jim. Thanks for spending some time with me on um, a pretty interesting topic, personality disorders. And what I would like to do is provide a good overview for you. I have written extensively on this topic, so if you'd like to read it, there there is an article available. Um, but a lot of folks just you know like to watch the video, so that that's great. But I'm going to rely on this. A little bit more than usual because this is a pretty pretty deep intense topic and I want to give you the best information that I possibly can okay so let's go everyone as you know has a unique personality and personalities take many years to develop and they consist of various beliefs and ways of thinking feeling and behaving and while the vast majority of Americans will not develop any signs or symptoms of a personality disorder, we do know that roughly over 9% of Americans will indeed develop signs or symptoms of personality disorders. And significant problems in social, academic, employment, and personal relationships can last for very long periods of time, many years, sometimes a lifetime, and these take a very serious toll on the individual's mental well-being, social, spiritual well-being, and their overall quality of life. So it's a pretty serious topic, personality disorders. Thankfully, and I will be talking about uh, this, there are some self-help methods and psychiatric services which can really help individuals with personality disorders to live fuller and better lives. And throughout my career, I have met many individuals with personality disorders who were receiving psychological or psychiatric care, many times both at the same time. Uh, that seems to be ideal. Um, and they went on to live pretty good lives. So there's hope. And that's a strong message that I'm uh, providing today. So let's start with the basics. What is a personality disorder? Um, a personality disorder is an enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that deviates markedly from the expectations of the individual's culture. And that's a quote from the DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual on Mental Disorders, and that's the fifth edition. Such experiences and behaviors can cause problems across all spheres of life and may be complicated by co-occurring psychological conditions, which means the individual already has a personality disorder, but they also have other psychological things like anxiety, depression, impulse control issues, and sometimes substance use disorders. And that just makes the entire clinical picture even more complicated. Now, we really, I'm getting in the weeds with you here, but I want to show you that there are several categories and types of personality disorders to be aware of. So understanding and being able to differentiate personality disorders can be very challenging. Ten personality disorders out of the DSM-5 are categorized into three groups. We have suspicious, emotional, and impulsive, and then anxious. All right. An additional type, which may be diagnosed when the individual exhibits criteria for more than one type in other words, they don't fall neatly into suspicious. They don't fall neatly into emotional impulsive or into anxious. When they exhibit more than one type, it's called a mixed personality disorder. And the following categories and the specific types of disorders that belong to them are as follows. Number one, suspicious. We have three disorders. Paranoid personality disorder, schizoid personality disorder, and schizotypal personality disorder. 
Number two, emotional and impulsive. Those include four different types. Antisocial, borderline, histrionic, and narcissistic personality disorders. Third category, anxious. Includes avoidant, dependent, and obsessive compulsive personality disorder, which should not be confused with OCD. That's a disorder all on its own. So let's go back and take a look at these and put some meat on the bones. Personality, uh, paranoid personality disorder is characterized by a lack of trust and confiding in other people, as well as feelings of being used, difficulty in relaxing, and overreading threats and dangers in everyday life or in various uh, environments. Symptoms of schizoid personality disorder, on the other hand, are less troublesome and include difficulty forming close relationships, an inability to experience pleasure, lack of interest in sex, and being mostly alone. This is when we see people who are really loners in society. The last disorder in the suspicious category is schizotypal personality. And this involves distorted thoughts or perceptions, odd or eccentric behaviors, feelings of anxiousness or paranoia, all which make forming relationships very difficult. Okay. Now, among the emotional and impulsive disorders, hallmarks of antipersonality disorder include acting impulsively or out of anger without any consideration for other people, putting oneself in harm's way, acting illegally at times, being aggressive, and continually getting into conflicts and fights. The, diagno uh, the diagnosis usually occurs before the age of 15 as well. That's a very interesting point. One disorder that has gained a lot of attention lately, and you may have heard about it more than any others, is borderline personality disorder. And it's characterized by unstable emotions, feelings of abandonment, uh, experiencing very intense emotions when it might not really be appropriate to do so, and being very impulsive. People with this disorder may harm themselves, um, experiencing sometimes suicidal thoughts or attempts. They struggle to trust other people, and they have a strong, they lack a very strong sense of who they are. That's an interesting disorder, and it's one that I'm very, um, I focus on a lot, I read a lot. It's one of my uh, go-tos, I guess, that I um, tend to spend more time with. Two other disorders in the emotional and impulsive category are histrionic and narcissistic personality disorders. I'm sure you've heard of those. Histrionic involves continually being the center of attention and feeling uncomfortable when not being the center of attention. It also means being overly dramatic, emotional, feeling responsible for entertaining other people, and being easily influenced by others. Now, some of those categories, you might say, I know people that are like that, but I mean, I like to entertain people, <laughs> but I don't have all of those qualities. So try not to overly diagnose your friends and family members or colleagues. Let me take a sip on David Bowie coffee because you know everything tastes better mm. in a David Bowie mug. Now, people diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorders. I mean, I could easily fall into a couple of these myself. Um, these people feel very special, better than other people. They become upset and resentful at other people's 
attention or success. They tend to be very selfish and have a very fragile self-esteem. Some of those apply to me and some of those don't. So I would need a number of those to apply in order for a psychologist or a psychiatrist to actually say, Jim, you know what, you have blank personality disorder. Now, within the last, within the anxious category, there is avoidant personality disorder where feelings of anxiety cause avoidance of work and social activity. Uh, there's great sensitivity to being criticized in any way. These folks worry about being shamed and they experience feelings of loneliness and inferiority. Dependent personality disorder is characterized by feeling needy and very weak, afraid to care for oneself, allowing others to assume responsibility for them and their lives. And of course, they also suffer from low self-esteem. And finally, not to be confused with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which is more of a behavioral disorder, obsessive compulsive personality disorder describes those who are driven by perfection, a drive to keep everything in order and under control, and becoming anxious when everything is not perfect. Okay, now... I'd like to talk about possible causes of personality disorders. And there are disagreements out there among the experts. And of course, research is always going on in this area. But I do want to share with you uh, what we do currently know about possible causes of personality disorders. So without getting overly specific about every type of personality disorders... Most are caused by a combination of risk factors within one's environment, social circumstances, early life experiences, and of course, genetics. In terms of the environment and social circumstances, living in an unstable and chaotic family whose members have mental health or substance use problems is a major risk. Lack of support from loved ones, family members, mom and dad, a, um, a support group of some sort, experiencing poverty, discrimination, or dislocation may all form, I use this analogy a lot, you take each one of those and you put them in a whirlwind and it creates the perfect storm for a disorder to develop. So someone might live in poverty, yet they never experience a personality disorder. Some people may grow up without real love and connection with a parental figure, yet they go on to not develop any type of personality disorder. But when you get more of these causal factors, the risk increases. Most psychological issues are usually associated with one's past, especially their younger childhood and adolescent years, and the same holds true for personality disorders. Experiencing something that we're really paying attention to a lot these days, trauma, abuse, and neglect. These are indeed risk factors involved in the formation of personality disorders. And lastly, genetics do play a role. What is unknown is how much of a role genetics plays in developing a personality disorder. Certain genes linked to various conditions may lay dormant, almost like a light switch. They're off and then they are turned on by this perfect storm of events and circumstances where they become activated by severe stress, by trauma, or growing up in very undesirable conditions. All right, let's now take a look at self-help when it comes to personality disorders. And I have to take another swig of you-know-what, David Bowie coffee. It's not really David Bowie coffee. It's coffee that we make in a Keurig. <laughs> that I, and I have a lot of David Bowie cups. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you a quick funny story. Um, one of our viewers out there, I guess, is a David Bowie fan, too. And um, he watches um, Collins Learning CEU Academy courses and uh, probably the blogs as well. And um, he called one day and he said, tell Dr. Jim I really love his videos and I'm sending him a David Bowie mug. You don't have to do that. Don't do that. I just thought it was really nice that he is. Self-help for personality disorders. While living with a personality disorder can range from mild to challenging to absolutely severe and debilitating, okay? There's a spectrum there. There are a number of self-help methods and lifestyle modifications that can absolutely help. Learning various ways to cope with symptoms is important and can be achieved through learning more about the condition, becoming more self-aware of one's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And of course, avoiding triggers is extremely important. I'm one of those people who believe truly, and you might know this and you might feel the same way. Say you have symptoms of a physical illness. Let's use that as an example. And you just don't know what is wrong. And your healthcare practitioners don't know what's wrong until finally they run the right tests, so on and so forth. And all of a sudden, you now have a name. You have a diagnosis, a label to your condition. You tend to feel a little better because now you can identify it. And then if you're like me, you research and you learn as much as you can about it. That way you learn to live with symptoms. So management of things like anger, depression, anxiety, those can all be achieved through self-help techniques like deep breathing exercises, meditation, prayer, keeping a journal, doing something creative, exercising or distracting oneself with work or a hobby can also be very important and productive ways to channel negative emotions into something positive. If one is experiencing dissociation, it might be helpful uh, to be more aware of the environment, the sounds in the environment, the sights, wrapping oneself up in a blanket, walking barefoot, or using aromatherapy to bring yourself back to reality. Dissociation is sort of when you feel unreal. You're not quite there. You're not fully present. So doing something physical, creating some type of stimulation might bring you back to reality. So knowing about it obviously is important and how to bring yourself back. And if self-harm is an issue, and I take this so seriously, some experts recommend drawing red lines on your arm with a pen on your wrist, on your arm, somewhere like that, snapping uh, the wrist with a rubber band, holding ice cubes against parts of your body to feel the sensation, or taking a very cold shower. Other ways to better manage troublesome symptoms include creating a healthy support network of people that you could go to and talk to and be open and honest and raw and, and bear your soul and bear your symptoms and planning for especially difficult times, finding an advocate, using relaxation techniques, using mindfulness, being fully present, diving into some type of religious readings or scripture and taking care of your physical health are all very important. Now I'd like to talk about personality disorders and seeking professional help and staying compliant with those services. So beyond self-help methods, some individuals will need the care and treatment of specialists in mental and or behavioral health. While there's no psychiatric medications specifically prescribed for personality disorders, Certain drugs, of course, uh, 
can help to manage symptoms of anxiety, depression, or perhaps sleep difficulties. Some professionals may recommend a combination of medication and therapy or counseling. Like I said earlier, combination of counseling and medications, probably a great plan because if it's biochemical in any way, the medications can help. If it's about cog cognitive thoughts, feelings, emotions, then therapy can help. So why not try a combination at the same time? Okay. So um, understanding, is it more medication-based or more thought-based, which is working better? That will come in time. So medications can help with biological symptoms like serotonin, related mood, in, uh, mood imbalance, and therapy can help the person to develop coping skills. Why not do both at the same time? So in terms of psychotherapy, specific modalities may be recommended, including dialectic behavior therapy to help manage emotions, mentalization-based therapy to help recognize and understand one's and other's mental states, Cog and then we have cognitive behavioral therapy to see how thoughts and feelings are connected to behaviors and cognitive analytic therapy, which focuses on trust in the therapeutic relationship and finding better ways to cope with difficulties. I told you that this was a heavy lifting article, but one that I was just, I was, um, I was just motivated to keep writing and researching and then sharing this video with you. Here are my final thoughts on personality disorders. While personality disorders affect a small percentage of Americans, 9%, I still think that's significant, compared to classic anxiety or depressive disorders, because the numbers are way higher on those, they do tend to be chronic and sometimes very devastating to those living with them, and to the people in their lives. Personality disorders are also very complicated, with roots beginning mainly in childhood and developing over many years, and that's what makes them personality disorders. They can also carry, unfortunately, a stigma, since they're based on a, person, a person's personality. So there's, you know, there's something wrong with you. You're broken. That's the, the stigma, but that's very unfortunate, and I don't buy that at all. So some personality disorders can be viewed as deviant, dysfunctional, and unpredictable. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on this. Through both self-help methods and the help of experts out there in mental and behavioral health my message is, there's always hope for living a fuller, more satisfying life and remaining in careers and important relationships that mean a great deal to the individual. I'm Dr. Jim. Keep coming back for more good information and hopefully things that you could use in your life. Thank you so much for taking some time to watch the video. I appreciate it. And if you're a licensed healthcare professional who's looking for some great continuing education, we've got it. And we are always working on brand new, fresh content for you. So you can find the link to the website in the description. And keep coming back for more information. I hope to see you soon.